Okay, great. Jason, got Jason lined up. You're bowling pretty well on this shorter pattern. It's a little bit shorter distance than, um, than you may find in most leagues, but this is pretty close to what you're used to bowling on when it comes to your actual league, and you're pretty lined up on it. It looks like you're pretty comfortable here. Yeah. Um, something you can be successful competing on, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, used to bowling on a shorter pattern in a sport league. We bowl on a 36-foot pattern, 35-foot pattern, so I'm used to playing a little further to the right during our league, so yeah, I'm pretty comfortable out there. Great. Yeah, it looks like you, you got a really good reaction to the pocket. Now, the scenario we're talking about here is if we're going to have you bowl in the next lane and give you an example of what you may be competing on maybe in this week's tournament coming up. So I'm going to ask you to move over to the next lane here. We're going to go from a 34-foot pattern to a 44-foot pattern now, and we're going to plan on packing a bag for that event. Okay. Wow, pretty easy to see. There's a big difference from what we just got off of to what we're bowling on now. We're talking 10 foot difference in length. We're talking a significant difference when we talk about maybe volume difference. So there's gonna be, even though you played the same part of the lane and just threw a shot that was in the same part that you threw on the other lane, not necessarily the same reaction. So we're gonna to wanna to take some different tools with us when we get ready to go to this event, aren't we? Absolutely, I mean, as you can see there, that ball had no chance of picking up. I'd probably do a couple things. One, I'd make sure I had a bowling ball that responded to the friction. I mean, especially since there's less friction lengthwise on the lane, I'd want something that wants to really see that friction and get going. Right. I would definitely try to play a little closer to the pocket too. Again, because the ball has less time to hook, right. I don't want to have it try to make up as much ground. Probably take a couple balls with some service on them too to make sure that they'll stand up, just depending on the lane service I'm bowling on. Right. And definitely something a little lower RG to make sure it picks up again in case the surface is really slick. Yeah, three quick things you talked about just in equipment alone, number one. The other thing you talked about is surface. Big thing when you talk about surface as far as what you need for long patterns versus short patterns. When you talk about needing multiple surfaces, it's easy to change those surfaces, isn't it? We can pack our bag that's got a couple of tools inside of it. We take some, some surface adjustment tools, the Aberlon pads or some other items that you may be able to throw in there, and that makes it real easy for you to take a set of equipment. Maybe it's the same stuff you're using, maybe it's not the same stuff from League Night, and make it fit exactly what you're looking for. You also talked about being able to make an adjustment as far as where you're going to play in the lane. The difference in the longer pattern is going to mean you need to sharpen your tools as far as when you're comfortable playing inside or playing outside. That way, whenever you're ready to get out there in competition, you're ready to go with that set of tools. Absolutely. Nothing worse than getting to a tournament and feeling like you're handcuffed or uncomfortable. Even in league, it's difficult. If you're in a part of the lane you're not super comfortable with, it's very difficult to repeat shots. Yeah, that's definitely what you want to pay attention to. Make sure that whenever you're getting ready to go to an event, you're not taking the same tools if you're going to see a different environment. When you go to that new environment, plan ahead of time. Get as much practice as you can on, that, on what you're going to experience and make sure you pack the right things when you're going to that event. Okay, we just talked about which bowling balls we're going to take into that situation when we talked about the tournament with the longer oil pattern. So now we'll talk a little bit about the accessories we can take with us for that event. Now, one of the things we talked about was changing the surface on the equipment, and to do so, one of the quickest and easiest ways are going to be the Aberlon pads. Multiple grits, um, having those with you and having them readily available is going to make it really easy for you to change surfaces on command. It's also nice because surfaces are, can go back the other way and be changed the other direction, so if you, if you find a surface you like and you change it to something that's going to fit that new tournament environment, you can always change it back. It's really easy to do. One of the other things you might throw in the bag is some, simply since we're going to a longer oil pattern, we may want to take a, a towel with us to keep the oil off the, the cover stock of the bowling ball. So if you're not used to using a towel, you may put that into your pre-shot routine. That may become part of what you're going to use when you talk about a longer distances or maybe heavier volumes of oil. Also, when you compete in any tournament environment, and I like to take this to any event, I try to take, make sure and I have equipment with me that keeps the ball clean. So I, I take some equipment that keeps the, the surface clean after I get done bowling. That way it's easy for me to take and, and get that, um, any of the, the dirt or inconsistencies off the, the surface of the ball. Now, when I got all these tools together and I've got them all packed and ready to go, it's easy for me to make, to make notes along the way. And one of the ways I like to do that real quickly is to just go ahead and take my notebook out, make a couple reference notes. And when I'm doing that, that gives me an idea if it's multiple days or if I'm going back to that long pattern event of what I did in the past, maybe what worked and what didn't work. And that way I can keep my thought process so it's successful and I can actually learn from my experiences. That way I get better as I go along.